You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. Like flames, flames on the side of my face. It's flames. Anyway, what have you got for today for us, Mike? Well, I've got a story about the way of keeping your bills low. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media where you can follow us, the Cud.tv for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as names flub a dub, ooh, I've come over all bin and bin again. Um, anyway, as they go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for this week's show, Biz with Lee. <laughs> Did you watch She-Hulk, Mike? Nope. No, I didn't either. No. Not really my thing. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it anyway. Yeah. So, apparently it was a big success. Apparently it's been really good. Yeah, I've people have enjoyed it. I've got a lot on my watch list at the minute. She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Mm. Mm. So, it was all about She-Hulk, obviously, because the, the clue was in the name of the, of the programme. And she's, in fact, an attorney at, at law. law. yeah. Yes. But apparently fans were shocked to discover... That, that she the, was green. No, that the titular... Titular... Oh. character was played by a man in a key scene. Oh. Outrageous. So it came to an end and um, it's kind of good. They've left left it to the, it could come back, it might not come back. Okay. Who cares? Um, so basically what happened is, is that in the last episode, mm -hmm. they did like um, like a, is it an Easter egg yes. thing? Or a homage to the original series of the it, Hulk. It depend, did they do it as an extra thing that you had to wait to watch? No, it was part of the programme. Okay, so it's just not a homage. So the, the pay, it was homage to the 1970s TV series Incredible Hulk, which... Uh, did you did you ever watch that? When he like he's doing his tire and then it flips and he hurts himself and he goes... Uh, and yeah. and they the shine a green light on his face. And, yeah. Yeah, so it, so they kind of replicated that, which turns into the into hurting herself, changing a tire. But apparently, rather than use CGI mm -hmm. and all that kind of trickery that they used, they used um, they used a, an influencer and pro bodybuilder, Devon Lewis, oh, okay. in a wig. Um, so that's him on the left, as as a, as the She Hulk mm -hmm. in a wig. That's what he looks like in the middle, uh -huh. and that's She Hulk. I think that looks like a CGI version yeah, of She-Hulk. Yeah. So people were kind of like, ooh, look at that. <laughs> um, yeah. So he said, prior to the show, he said, it's funny, I've been seeing people post this She-Hulk TikTok video, but a lot of people haven't realised that She-Hulk was played by a man. So okay. alongside the footage, he showed a couple of behind-the-scenes shots. This is BTS shots, which always throws me because I think he's. I always when people say BTS, I always think of that pop group. Um, covered in headstone green paint, uh, alongside wearing a wig. Um, that is that's not him on the right. That's 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 the seventies version. What was he called? Lou Ferringo. <laughs> Did that, what? <laughs> that was his name, Lou Ferringo, the actor that played. Um, like something you're doing illegal. She Hulk, <laughs> not She Hulk, the original Hulk. Mm. He was deaf. What? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. So 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 he so the guy that played it the, the female version said yeah mother f that's me it's not very ladylike is it he says I don't in the comments the body of She-Hulk will never get any recognition but at least I was grateful to do it <sighs> that's really boring so isn't punky it? man wears a wig yeah okay paints himself green okay yeah I mean I'm not mad about it. I'm not really that interested in it either. So, but you know, it was showbiz, so I'll just put it in there. Why not? Okay. So, are you a fan of Rob Rinder? I love Rob judge. Rinder. Do you? I love Rob Rinder. What do you like about him? Because he's not a judge, he's a barrister. Is he not a bad? Why do they call him Judge Rinder then? Because Barrister Rinder doesn't sound barrister right. Barrister Rinder. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what would you pickly like about him? Pick a lily, I said. Pick a lily. <laughs> what do you pick a lily like about him? I, I like the little bits of cauliflower you get in pick a lily. I don't know why. It's a bit weird, but I do. <laughs> um, you just like his personality? Oh, I just because I, I like the, the way that he'll quite happily lose it. Okay. So if if, you see, if something's funny in, in when he's adjudicating and he laughs, he won't stop himself. He'll laugh. Okay. Right, and he, he puts that more human face on the law, law profession, which I quite liked. The fact that you will quite happily laugh along to something. Okay. Like when that licky licky thing. 
Never watched it. Never seen of it. it. Never. I need to show you some of it. Um, so, but so he's basically revealed he had a car crash gym encounter. He didn't drive his car into the gym. It was it was with another celebrity. So he was doing an interview and he said that he, that he was asked about his worst ever celebrity encounter, mm -hmm. and he said that it, it happened in the gym. He said nobody looks at anyone at my gym. So he was on the treadmill. <laughs> Um, just focus on the on the car. Yeah. Um, so, um, <laughs> Too busy like, ribbing each other. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we both like How good that? In the sauna. Um, so, oh, no, I was in the shower. He was on a he was on a <laughs> treadmill, and he said, "So I just thought there was a homeless girl running next to me, and then I had a moment of epiphany, and it was Harry Styles." Okay. So he said, so we've got we've got a picture of not of them together. They're just separately, so you know who they are. Harry Styles. <laughs> just in case you didn't know who Harry Styles <laughs> was. Because they're often confused. Um, <laughs> he said, so he said he then overcompensated by praising Harry Styles about his evol evolution into a real artist. Um, he said, when I subsequently got starstruck and ended up in this really long conversation and just kind of couldn't stop talking, it was the worst social car crash event ever. He said he hugged me because he needed to make it stop. <laughs> it was like an act of, of social euthanasia. Um, we've, we've got a picture of Judge Rind, because he likes to go to the gym, old Rind. Um, I don't think he'd like to be called old Rind. Old Rind. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Not yeah. Um, yeah, so he goes to the gym quite a lot. I, you know, this isn't very nice to say, but he's very butterface. He's not an unattractive gentleman. Okay. I mean, he's, so he's surprisingly, all my boxes, but he's gay. So, really? I know. Shocking. So shocking. And he's revealed that his sash his fashion sense is also at a car crash. His best girlfriend describes him as a gay that style forgot. There have been so many fashion disasters that I don't even know where to begin. I don't suffer from a specially dialed up version of narcissistic personality disorder, despite being on the telly. But the other day, somebody sent pictures of me when I was 17, and I look like a mashup of Little Lord Fauntleroy and Kim Jong-un. <laughs> That's turning me on. <laughs> I thought that might. Yeah. So, <laughs> look out for that. Um, and, you'll, <laughs> and your next Pornhub dalliance. Type that in, see what comes up. <laughs> I wouldn't type that in, because the police will come round. Um, Kim Jong-un porn. Dressed as little Lord Fauntleroy. It's very niche. Niche. Very niche. Dark web. Mm. Anyway, so moving on to our last When you say dark web, do you know what the dark web is? Not really. No, I didn't think you did. I just say it. Yeah. Is it is it is it for mysterious purposes? Is it for finding no very naughty things? Okay. Illegal activities. Illegal dark. things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Not not porn. Well, not porn, but very specific. Oh. Genre. Over. Mm. So I'm a fan of Elvira, or Elvira. That was very northern Elvira. <laughs> Elvira. 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 <laughs> Mistress of the dark, and she has kind of so over the past couple of weeks we've had Madonna on social media, kind of doing whatever Madonna does on social media, with her, like, alien face filter and all that kind of stuff. And she has seemingly come out as gay mm -hmm. on social media. She did this thing where she was holding a pair of knickers and she kind of said, if it misses, then I'm gay, something like that. Anyway, um, Elvira has said that she's not particularly surprised that, that Madonna is insinuating that she's gay. I mean, Madonna's always kind of been a bit like... <laughs> Bit of both. She like, oh god, that was awful. Um, yeah. Anyway, so Cassandra Peterson, <laughs> Cassandra Peterson, um, who plays Elvira, told um, somebody in an interview on a, on, a, on a podcast that her hint at her sexuality is actually isn't a surprise because Madonna has actually flirted with with her girlfriend in the past. Mm -hmm. um, that's Elvira. If, if you didn't know, that's Et. Oh, sorry, that's Madonna there. Um, She's right. I don't know what she's She's like. experimenting with her look. She is. She's shaved her eyebrows off. It's quite strange. Yeah. Um, and they're very big lips. Yeah. But not necessarily. Feel, they're they're overpainted, I believe the phrase is. Overpainted. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. So she did that thing on TikTok where she failed to throw a pair of, of, of knickers into an orange bin with a caption reading, If I miss, I'm gay. Um, so after the video, she said, Cassandra said, Well, she hit on my girlfriend, so I'm not surprised. So she said, so, Elvira's girlfriend is a personal mm. trainer. Okay. Um, and Madonna wanted to hire her as a trainer, but it was obvious that she wanted more than just training. I don't know if she wants um, mm. She said laughing. So, that, that's Elvira and her girlfriend. She said, but I think Madonna was always... Your friend's very sinewy. 
It's very what? Sinewy. 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 She's a personal trainer. They have to be sinewy. Oh, okay. It's part of the job description. <laughs> so, are you sinewy? No, sorry. <laughs> sorry, you can't be one. Um, she said, she just said, I'll just say that it's a long time ago. It's not a recent thing. She said, but I think Madonna has always said that she's pretty fluid. I mean, what with that kiss with Britney Spears? Again, I don't, that wasn't really. She said that she met her, 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 her personal girlfriend, a personal, personal girlfriend. trainer, <laughs> Rather than a, a Teresa Wearson girlfriend. at the Hollywood's Gold Gym in 2002 after forming a platonic bond. They quickly developed feelings for each other. That's Elvira and the girlfriend, not Elvira okay. and Madonna. Um, so, yeah, so the, M Madonna, she likes to, she likes what she likes. And, mm. you know. That's okay. That's okay. We embrace that for Madonna. Just... Stop Finding with the ridiculous filters. Um, Finding things in the later, later, later mm. life. And if you want to check out Elvira's 2021 um, biography, Yours Cruelly, Elvira, it's on platforms now. Yeah. I haven't read it yet, but it's on my list. It's on your list. Of things that I never will do. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, because she's gone to sleep now for the rest of the year, hasn't she? Who? Oh. Oh, yeah, she does, yeah. Because Halloween's over, she pop into, yeah. pop into a little... She copy. handed the baton to Michael Bublé out on her way to bed. And, yeah, and, and, then, and then Bublé's going, back, Mariah, not yet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> um, and that's the end of this week's showbiz news. Oh, thanks for that, Lee. Always nice to know that Madonna's still relevant. Oh, you're welcome, but stick around as next. It's Mike in the buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get ready to rumble, as it's Mike with the buzz. I didn't write that. So it's a story about Ant Deck, my first one. Is it? No. No. <laughs> it's not. I wouldn't have thought in the slightest. Because <laughs> I don't like them. No. No. Um, if someone told you that you couldn't have your dog anymore, mm -hmm. what would you do? I'd kill them. Okay. <laughs> as that. Just, just like you can't have your dog kill them. Not understand why. Or... Just right across the throat. <laughs> why do Why do I think with a glitter wand? I don't just had the two with something glittery. <laughs> Not one of those fluorescent pink knives that you can get. Okay, right across the jugular. Okay. Um, well, this is a story about a woman who's been found living in a hedge. This is quite sadly. <laughs> Okay. So, um, a farmer was clearing away... This is Tiggy Winkle. Who? She lived in a hedge. No idea who you're talking about. No, it's okay. No. Beatrix Potter. Oh, okay. Culture. Whatever. Beatrix Potter as culture. <laughs> Am I five? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so, yes, a, a farmer was clearing a, a hedgerow that hadn't been touched for years, and he came across a woman there. She dead? No, she was alive. Oh, she was alive. Popped her hand out saying, please don't, I live here. It's my home. It's my, this is what she was saying, right? Uh, basically, found out that she'd been living there because she couldn't bear to be separated from a cat. And she'd been kicked out of a house <sighs> that she was renting because she had a cat. Cats don't give a shit. This cat did. No, it didn't. The cat stayed with her. Yeah, only because it had nowhere else to go. Cat, it, right. That woman had died uh -huh. in that hedge yep. of, like, malnutrition mm -hmm. or, like, frozen to death, mm -hmm. that cat would have eaten her face. Yeah. No, no qualms about it. Yeah. Whereas a dog would have been very sad. So the dogs would be sad and then eat your face? No, it wouldn't eat your face. It would just go and find somewhere else. No, it wouldn't. It would eat, it would eat you too, but it would be sad about it. No. The cat's going, I'm going to eat you. No. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she's in her 50s and she's been staying there for a few years. Um, when she the, made it nice. She made it nice. Put a, put a tarpaulin over. Oh. Yeah, a couple of bags with stuff in. Um, and it's like sleeping bags and stuff. And they basically, when they found, found her, I right, said, what are you doing? She said, well, I can't find anywhere to live because I've got the cat. And he basically said, well, I've got somewhere you can stay. Right, and helped her out and, and basically helped A rhododendron her. in my garden you can have. <laughs> A rhododendron? It's nice, isn't it? Rhododendron might be. Is it? Yeah, Is rhododendron. How say it when it blooms? <laughs> <laughs> it's you like you've redecorated. <laughs> Why are you being so cruel? I don't know. I've got rage today. This is a heart, warm, happy feeling story about a woman that's been helped by a, a random stranger. All right, come on, man. Tell me, tell me what did he do? The thing in my ear is doing my tree in. <laughs> right, you've had rage today. Let's 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 vent. Let's talk about. No, the rage. I don't want to vent. <laughs> this in my ears is annoying me. Keeps going. 
and then cutting out. I've plugged it back in. OK. <sighs> right, come on, let's talk about the old woman in a bush. <laughs> <laughs> talk about the old woman in a bush. OK. Um, so, yeah, basically, Gareth, who'd, who'd found her, said, I've got somewhere you can stay, so he helped her out and then helped her get somewhere else more permanent. OK, that's nice. It's just a nice little story. So she got to keep her cat. I'm going to move on. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not you feeling don't, that. You're one. not feeling warm and fluffy, are you? I don't feel anything about that. How do you feel about new foods? Depends what they are. Okay. N name something you wouldn't be fussed about. I wouldn't be fussed yeah. about. Um, th then ones like Iceland doing like bean filled stuff. So, so vegan food, really? Is what you're no, saying. when they're like going, ooh, we filled this with baked beans, aren't we revolutionary? And you're like, it's no. Nasty. It's, crazy. it's a pasta, pasta, or it's a it's a hash brown, or it's a sausage roll with beans in it. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so just bean filled things. You well, that about. kind of stuff, you know. Okay, um, because Aldi are considering a new product range. Mm -hmm. Right, um, basically insects as food. Goes <sighs> for the deep sigh. Right, go on, carry on. Okay, right. So um, basically, the, the worked out that. Insects are cheaper to, to manufacture than mm. other types of meat and protein sources, mm -hmm. right? And um, basically, they, they did a thing called Aldi's Next Big Thing, which is a TV show, where people pitch their food ideas to Aldi mm -hmm. to try and get a range, and one of them was insect foods. They taste f***ing disgusting. They're not disgu just a bit powdery, really. They're horrible. But if you pop a bit of barbecue sauce on, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> 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 they're vile, and people are going, oh, no, they need just the way they cook them. No, it's not. They're disgusting. They're, like, just just evil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. You don't get it. But then you're going to have all the people that, like, vegans going, oh, insects have got vegans too, that kind yeah, of stuff. the feeling of them getting stuck in your teeth. <laughs> yeah, you said, I don't like that. Yeah. No. No. Give them to your spiders and your... Them things that are wow, 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 snakes, those things. Wow, 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 snakes. It's that kind of stuff that people have. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I can't see it taking off. You can't see it taking off? No. Is that they, they could possibly? No, it won't. <laughs> no, it won't. It won't. It'll be a novelty and then people will stop buying them. Unless they're really tasty. But they won't be. But they might be. They won't be, Mike. We've had f vegan food here that didn't look like it was going to be tasty that was. No, it wasn't. None of it was. Some of it was. The only thing that didn't taste like filth was uh, that that plant burger. Yeah. And that was it. And it was tasty. Mm. Yeah. But you're not going to make a burger out of f***ing crickets and go, ooh, yum, yum. No. I do. <sighs> so when's it happening, then? <laughs> Imminently. 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 Because actually, I was watching the Great British Bake Off, yeah. and one of them was using cricket flour okay. to make biscuits. And Prue, whatever she's called, was like going, Prue Leaf. Prue Leaf. She was going, oh yeah, it's really sustainable, blah, 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 it blah. Is. Tasted like <laughs> dust. How do you know? Because that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Did he really? No. No. You're just making it up then. I am, yeah. Yeah, because you don't like the idea. No, I don't like the idea, so I'm not going to allow anybody else to have an opinion on it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> and if you want to moderate other people's viewpoints as well, why not share that with us at The Could TV on our social media? And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, Lee, you'll hate this one as well, because that's the mood you're in. It is, yeah. <laughs> It's like, I hate everything. It's like a million pounds, I don't want it. OK. Gas and electric bills and things. <sighs> Through the roof. Probably you've just got to buy an air fryer. That's what you'd have to do. That solves all your problems. <laughs> air fryer solves all your problems. Living in air fryer. My high cholesterol. Everything. Air fryer. It's about one big enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, a gentleman from Rochdale has come up with an even better way than using an air fryer. Is it burning crickets on, a, on an open fire? Because <laughs> no. they generate enough heat. That's what's <laughs> they're going next, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> Run your cars off crickets. <laughs> <laughs> we finished. I'm going to keep going. I could, but I'm going to, I'm going to hold it in until it poisons me. OK, so in other words, for three minutes. Um, so this is a gentleman called Stuart, who's 43, um, who saved a fortune in clothing and energy bills by going everywhere naked. 
Um, and including going to the pub. Because then you just have to put the heating on. Look at his smug face. I, yeah, he's happy, he's naked. Good for him. Yeah, saving a fortune on, on his washing. Not having to spend money on clothes. But... <laughs> goes, goes places to use their heating, so he doesn't have to put the heating on at home. And what do the people in the pub think when he goes in with his little chode bobbing around? You said little chode. Well... Have you seen it? You bring up the second picture. He hasn't got anything. <laughs> it's got a smooth area. He's a Ken doll. <laughs> yes. <sighs> but it, it, it's blurred to about there. <laughs> so we can guess it's, it's not a Cho disc. But it doesn't mean that he's got a massive... Oh, it's dong. not a massive, because it'd be down he could to have like a mass massive. He could have like a big, big full sack. It's and a good. small chode. A small toad. It's <laughs> <laughs> not got to do anyway, it's got to toad. <laughs> <laughs> like a baked bean. I, don't, I mean, whatever. Great. Good for him. No, he's at his wife. He's at his wife for his girlfriend. It's his partner. His partner. partner. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, why ain't she got no clothes on? Does she not share the same beliefs? No. How is it going to last then? How? How? Yeah, what? What? I mean, he's got he's got socks on. The you liar. With his shoes. Is it, well, yeah, whatever. I mean, I good for him. If that's what, if that's if that's how we, you know, that is just attention seeking. That is not. That is not about um, oh, I'm, you know, the environment. Blah 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 blah. It's look at me. I've got my cock and balls out. What are you going to do about it? That's what it is. That's all it is. End of. <laughs> oh, he's got my rage up again. <laughs> just by walking around nude. Because it's just ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> it's just not practical. Don't come in, don't come in my pub and sit on my stools with you your shitty got a pub. I don't, but <laughs> if I did, that's what I would be saying. Not giving you a lift. To, to, <laughs> not giving you a lift down the road. Put some pants on. He can drive himself. Well, he might sometimes ask for a lift. Doesn't say he's going to get pissed. Don't come to my house at Christmas Day. You'll sit on a bin liner. That's the end of that. Yeah. So, yeah, you're inviting him around on Christmas Day now. Well, I'm not. If so he was a member of my family, I'd, I'd be saying that to him. Maybe you'd be a nudist too. No. 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 Just straight away, no. No. I'd like to see if in the middle of winter, when it's minus whatever, he's still bobbing around in his pink plump soles. Ooh, I'm doing it for the environment. I bet he's not. Yeah, and that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you, Mike, for provoking my rage yet again. Stick with us because coming up soon, <laughs> we've got our game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing the revamped Lazy Susan's Musical Roulette. And this one is for our anally retentive slack Alice Mike. Thanks. Game of the Week. Um, so we've got new questions, Lee. Oh, how thrilling. Yeah, we've got, we've got culture. Mm. And movies and music. Mm. This is exciting. Yeah, it is. In a really, you really spin it then. Anyway, okay. Needs to get laid. Okay, so this one is movies. 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 Okay. Now, which is the only Bond movie to star George Lazenby? Oh, I know, I know who he is. That's nice, you're one, one step closer than I am. Is it you only die twice? No. No. It's on Her Majesty's Secret Cervix. Oh, okay. That's nice. Get the next one. Yeah. Okay, this one's culture. 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 Like germs and stuff. Oh no. Which artist, artiste, did Eminem and M sample on his huge hit Stan? Dido. Dido, well done you. Air grab. Eminem just turned 50. 
This next one is music. Mm. Okay. Which rap artist died in 1996 after being shot while driving through Las Vegas? Oh my god. It's the one that Puff Daddy sang that song about. It um, is. Um, the Notorious B.I.G. No, that would be Tupac Shakur. Oh! Never mind. They're always shooting each other. Well, I've been known to shoot across a rapper myself. Another music one. Mm. Which rapper is featured at the beginning of Rihanna's smash hit Umbrolia? Umbrolia cream rice? Yeah, it does, Ambrosia. Um, Not Natalie Umbrolia. Nothing's right, I'm tall. Uh, it's nice to be on, say. Um, no, Jay-Z. Yes, Jay-Z. I'm sure they got divorced now. Down with the kids. No, no. Are you sure? No. I'm sure I heard that they were divorced. No. Next one. Movies. <laughs> Subtle. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are the final three words Jack says to Rose after the Titanic goes down? There was room on there for me, you <laughs> 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 Three words. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'll never let go. Never oh. let go. I didn't pull out. <laughs> 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 All over your back. Um, is it? Is it? I came inside. What was um, it? <laughs> condom broke. <laughs> no, it's, it was I never let go. Oh, there you go. I was never let go. But, yeah. That's four words, though. I'll never let go. No, never let go. Never let go. Never let go. Never let go, Rose. Never let go, Jack. And then she and prized then his she fingers go. off that wooden <laughs> yeah. board. Then she goes, him sink. Let's go. <laughs> and then eight <laughs> years later, let's yeah. go of the diamond. It goes, whoops. Yeah. Okay, bye bye then. Yeah. <laughs> the next one. Oh, another movies one. Oh, it's almost you stopped it. It's almost like I stopped it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Who provides the voice for Princess Fiona in Shrek? Cameron Diaz. It was Cameron Diaz. Have you read these questions? No, I'm just very intelligent. Have you read these questions? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Oh, next one. Culture. Culture. Let's just take the little thing out of the thing and then do that then. Okay. Which planet is nearest the sun? Now, the child in me would say Uranus. No, my my anus is much more close. I'm gonna. Is it the is it the Earth? <laughs> it's the Earth. The Earth is the closest planet to the Sun. That's why we have sunshine. Do you remember the the hit TV sitcom from the nineties, Third, Third Rock, Rock from, from the, the Sun? sun. Which, Jupiter. Which? It's even further out. Neptune. No, you're going further out now. Um, Saturn. Freddy. Oh, Freddy. Freddy? Freddy. I don't know. I want to break free. I want to break free. Mercury. Yes. Uh, I don't, I'm not interested in that, that though. <laughs> okay, we're back to, to movies now. Okay. Okay. In The Wizard of Oz, how many times, these questions are so easy. How many times does Dorothy have to tap the ruby shoes to get back home? Is it three times? Can Click you your heels it? together three times. Click your heels together three times. Alicia's Attic? Yeah. Wow. That's a very niche song. It is, isn't it? Or I was going to go for knock three times on the... Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. Boo-doo, boo-doo. Twice on the pipes. Do -do. If the answer is no, <laughs> I have no idea who sang that, but it's in my head. In your head? Mm. Like a zombie. Oh. Zombie. A, 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 O. 
Oh, it's split between music and movies. What would you like? Let's go for some music. Music. Sounds better with you. Ooh, baby. What was the rapper Eminem's first single to reach number one in both the United Kingdom and the United States of America? Um... Not the one about Stan. No. No. Not the one called Stan. Um... I don't know. Loose yourself. Okay. I don't know what that one is. You gotta lose yourself in the music in the moment. Dibba 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 oh, dibba okay. dibba oh, you're in the me, 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 me. And the next one's culture. What did Joseph Presley discover in 1774 while you were in high school? Elvis Presley's mum's clunge. No. Um, um, in what? In high school? No, while you... <laughs> what did Joseph Priestley discover in 1774? <coughs> That's the year you were in high school. Okay, so um, nice. Um, gravity. <laughs> I don't know. Oxygen. Oxygen! Mm. Oh, oh. What happened before that? How did people breathe? They didn't. They lived under the sea. They found out it was better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. <sighs> Music. Blondie's Heart of Ass and the Village People's YMCA were big hits in which year? Which year? Which year? I'm, I'm going to say... 1983. It was before I was born. 1984. I don't know. You're making me younger there, Lee. What's wrong with you? The 83. 1979. Last one now. Culture. Which is the only mammal that can't jump? Elephant. You have seen these cards before, that No, one. genuinely. I, that's one of those things that kind of, it's like, it's like a, it's, <laughs> you know, they can't jump, because they, because they, because if, for them to jump, mm. it would shatter every bone in their body because of their body mass. And they don't have the right feet. No. Because their feet are soft and squidgy. Is it right? Yeah. So oh, yeah. well done, me. Well done, you. Mm. Well, that's enough for that. Yes, great. This is what purgatory is like, if anybody's wondering. Anyway, after this quick break, it's science that is. Oh, Jesus. Now, it's that part of the show where we go over to Mike, who teaches us things that we either already know or didn't really want to know. Uh, it's that science that is. That science, that is. So today we're going to talk about basically water. Great. Okay. And and how to make things um, basically homophobic. Homophobic, Mike. What do you mean? I mean hydrophobic. Hydrophobic. Hydrophobic, which is something slightly different. So in front of you, you should have a, a, a gin glass. It's a lot. Is this your measures of gin? These are my gin glasses. Yes. Huge, aren't they? Yeah. It's like a goblet. Yeah. Enough room for gin. Um, um, you should have a little packet of some sand. I think I've got brown sand. I've got some purple sand. Purple sand. What happens if you sprinkle your sand into the into the glass? You just make sand water. Sand water. Oh, is that what you want me to do? Yeah, just uh, pop all it. of it. No, just a little bit. You don't need to pop all of it. Just a little tip. Just, just the tip. It just sinks, doesn't it? It does, Mike. Okay. Now, what we need to do there is need to make something homophobic. Do we? Hydrophobic. Hydrophobic. Yes. Um, which basically means it, it repels water. Really? Mm. You're not loving this already, are you? Eh? 
you're just hating this already, aren't you? I'm, I'm, you know, it is what it is, mate. <laughs> okay. So in your Tupperware, you have some hydrophobic sand. Hydrophobic? Yes, not homophobic, as I keep saying, some hydrophobic sand. Okay. Now, inside your hydrophobic sand, there may be some dog hair. Oh. Because as I was preparing this, I came downstairs to find my dog lying in it as if it was a oh. bed. Stinks. It doesn't pl smell pleasant, no. But that's not about the dog, that's about the chemicals that are on it to make it hydrophobic. Um, so what I want you to do is take a, take a little spoon, teaspoonful mm -hmm. of this. Okay. If you want to remove dog hair, you can. How much? Just take a little teaspoonful. Okay. You may remove dog hair if you oh, want. Oh, there's a lot of dog hair in there, Mike. There's a sleep on it. Considerable <laughs> amount. There's a considerable <laughs> amount of dog hair in there. Yeah, he's in malting. Fact, it's malting season for him. I think there's more dog hair than there is sand. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Um, <laughs> but gently. <laughs> okay. But what I want you to do is gently, just gently, just place it on top of the the water. It sank like a little brown. Fish. But some of them will float. Some of it will float. Some of it will float. Yeah. I'm gone. I'm, yeah, <laughs> the dog hair's keeping it afloat. I'm just gonna. I'm just blocking some more out. Um, so I just plop that gently on the top. Gently on the top, yeah. Not under the water. On top of. The oh, water. sorry. It just sank. Okay, so like this, like this, Lee. On top of the water. Yeah, yours is just sinking. No, because some of it is floating. See, oh, it's orange layer at the top. But if you look at the bottom of it. Your, your floats are in clumps, and you're able to pick them up out of the water, and they're dry. That's floating on the top. They are. Now, if you push it under to make it sink, Boop. right, you're able to scoop it back up again. Is it that kid's sand? No, Is it that underwater sandy sculpture thing? No answer there, just do it like. Yeah, it's it's come out. It has come out and it's it's still dry. So you can touch it, it's dry. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. Um so you can actually make this at home. So you can buy it, as Lee said, from a, like a, a place in a shop. Um but the way you make hydrophobic sand is with a, a I would say a fabric protectant that we're going to call Hotch Hard. Hotch hard, so that we're not, yeah. But if you give it a proper mix up as well, it'll stay in little blobs, because it's in the water. It's clever, that, isn't it? Yeah. So what do you want me to do now? Just, just have a bit of a moment to play. Let your inner child out. It's wet, and now it's dry. It's wet. And now it's dry. Clever. It's like fishing a turd out of the system. I don't know, I've never fished a turd out of the system. But whatever you do, don't put the, the used sand back in with the other sand. <laughs> you have done, haven't you? No. Yeah, you have. Anyway, we've got some more things we can do with hydro hydrophobics, though. Have we? We have. So, you should have some some little, um, what are you going to call this? Because I, I, call, I call them a J-cloth. Okay, we'll call it a J-cloth then. <laughs> and the gallery apparently call them jam rags. So, um, if you dip this into your water, give it a wiggle. When you pull it out, if you give it a wiggle, it should be dry as well. Because this has also been co covered in hydrophobic liquid. No, it's white, Mike. If you're giving it a shake, pretend you've had a wee, give it a bit of a shake and man, and it's dry again. No, it's wet, Mike. It's wet. Mine's dry. I must have given you one that's been done. It's just got that sand stuff stuck to it. That's it. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Well, mine's dry, so, yeah. And the last little bit of hydrophobic. I've given you what is seemingly a single sheet of, of um, tissue paper. Mm-hmm. OK. If you moisten this gently, using your spoon to moisten the water, right, something magic should appear. Moisten it? Moisten it. Wet it. With me spoon? With your spoon. So use a, use a spoon to get some water. 
Hang on. You don't want to pour the glass onto it because you're near electrics. Okay. And I'm going to do the same, but a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to... So like, get a teaspoonful of water and then do it, Lee. And look, as if by magic, I've got the letter L for Lee. And what letter have you got? Um, I've got D for, oh no, sorry, D for disappointment. Um, I've got M for um, murder. And that's because the-, the She wrote. The ha oh, she's dead. She can't help you, she's dead. Um, but yeah, and then if you're very careful, you can separate the dry from the wet. And you can have your own, your own little letter cut out. Well, you, you'll have my letter cut out because I gave you the wrong one. <laughs> so the gallery say I can give it to you as a present. Wow. So, rock on Christmas. So yeah, I've got a little elf in Lee. Good day, isn't it? No, it's just... It's just what? It's fine, Mike. It is. It is fine. Why? Why is the? Why are the police coming? Why is the? Uh, finally, <laughs> finally. Why have I got it? Why have I got a stick? Huh? Why have because I got a stick? Because if you really wanted to, you could stir it up. Oh, you, you could just stir make... up your hydrophobic sand and see what happened. I shall do that. You should get little doubles of colour if you spin it. You fished all your sand out, haven't you? Well, some of it in. Put some more sand in there. Oh, God. Doubles. With the dog hair. But not the purple. I just thought, why not? There we go. See, that's exciting. And that's science, that is. That science, that is. What's with the face? Nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Has that not inspired more of your rage? It's not. It's, you know, it's not angered me, Mike. It's just, you know, it is what it is. Week in, week out. Just the crushing sense of, of disappointment. OK. There's a lot of dog hair in it, though. There is a lot of dog <laughs> hair on that. If you, if you, if you want to go for a, a dog hair cocktail, I think you're successful. That would kill you. Yeah, no, it wouldn't. No, they're... they're... The stuff that you need, no. No, that would kill you. You could put a fish in that, couldn't you? A goldfish dead in that. fish? Just, that would, be, that would be like a feature on your table. Wouldn't be alive for long. No, but still. There's a choice there. Like, you could get let's a murder carrot. some fish. No, well, no, you could get carrot and chop it into a fish shape. <laughs> if that appears on Let's Be Crafty Crafty. <laughs> <laughs> anything we're just thinking. Oh, anything hmm. about vegetables, no. Mm. Just now. It's going to be a bit of a disappointment then next week. Mm. Oh well. That's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. Our website is a could.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcast services, just search for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Pretty colours, though.